I mean, it's it, it'd be hard to not yeah. find riding living at the foot of one of the main mm. Surrey hills. But mm. how, which brings me on to, how on earth yeah. did you find snowboarding? Where did you live before? So I lived, when I grew up, um, I started riding at a place called Halifax Ski and Snowboard Centre, which was probably five, it was like five minutes from my parents' house in Halifax. Is that so the outdoor one? It's the dry slope, so like yeah. the plastic slope. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it's literally so it's, like on a housing estate, I feel like. Is that right? Um, no, it's actually on the top of a, it's on the top of a hill in Halifax, mm. and it's quite, it's quite um, secluded and very open, um, in, and there's just fields and sheep and cows surrounding it. Okay. <laughs> it's very, yeah, it's, it's very in the countryside, and it's, it's, um, it was a really nice place, and I started snowboarding at the age of seven, and... I kind of was hooked from day one, really. That's all I wanted to do. And until I was 15, I pretty much rode there six days a week. Yeah. Like every day after school. I didn't want to do anything else. I wasn't even bothered about my GCSEs. I was like, fuck that. <laughs> I'm just going to snowboard for my <laughs> rest of my life, not knowing that I would <laughs> end up where I've ended up. It was kind of just taking that risk and just following my passions. And it kind of led me down this path of, you know doing all right for myself from a, for a, a person from the uk where there's no mountains yeah and yeah just um kind of snowball effect and uh, yeah yeah nice <laughs> I ended up ended up competing all around the world i i was on i got selected for team gb at 15 years old and and then started competing internationally and um, yeah, they just went from that. I feel like me and Dave, you're going to be annoying whilst you talk because I, <clears throat> I need a lot of things clarifying. Are you, are you the same, Davey, right? I'm the same. I think <laughs> I have my first annoying question. You say <laughs> okay, go dry, dry ski slope. There are different yeah. types, right? Yeah, there's a few different types. So what yeah. you grew up and learnt on, because you learnt on mm. dry, dry slope, what ski. was that like? Is that yeah. the one with all the holes in? No, it's not that one. Okay. Actually... I did my lesson on that one. It's called Dendex. It's got the. It's it's horrible because if you fall on it, your your hand can go yeah. underneath and Ooh. break both, like break your wrists, um, <sighs> generally, and fingers as well. And um, that was the one I learned on. But then the main slope was a. a it was called Snowflex, which was a little bit more forgiving. There wasn't the holes, and it was just. It's kind of like, think of it as like a toothbrush. Really, it's just bristles. Yeah, like astroturf and is it? And, yeah, not quite astro. Like it's it's like plastic, like fine plastic bristles that stick up, and there's like little sprinkler systems in there, and it just uh. squirts water and mist. And then it, it when it's wet, it's quicker. Obviously, when it's dry, it's um, pretty useless. To be fair, it's it's on like a hot summer's day. It's really hard to um, to ride it because it's really dry in certain places. So the best kind of conditions to ride Snowflex is or any dry slope for that matter is when it's raining still winter so like yeah yeah, so like this time of year was perfect like the damp conditions was like the best Mm. and and no wind because it was really exposed up the top of halifax so it was like really windy up there like some nights and it was just kind of a no-go but we'd get the rails out and snowboard on the rails and not ride the jump because the wind affected the jump and just kind of went went with it man it was like all we had it was it wasn't the biggest slope it wasn't the best but it got me to where I am today, so I'm really thankful for it, you know? Yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's interesting as well when, obviously, Ollie and I spoke before we started recording this, and, you know, one of the first things you want to know is, like, how does a guy from the UK become a professional snowboarder? Like, like I know it's probably a bit mm. of a common question for you, but when you put it like that, that, like, you know, you had one literally down the road from your house, five minutes away, yeah. you can kind of see how all those hours of doing it stack up to becoming... Yeah what you ended up yeah no definitely like i was you know very fortunate to have somewhere that was close and local and my parents were really supportive of it like they used that the there was a really good scene there as well so my parents could drop me off and there was like a good crew of people there that was always looking out for me and stuff and because they couldn't be there all the time you know and i wanted to be there every single night and um (laughs) and i rode there for like three hours every night six days a week and just just absolutely loved it filming with my buddies and the the whole where i am today was never the plan like when i started snowboarding wasn't for that it wasn't to become professional it wasn't to 
to go to the Olympics. That was never on my mind or even to compete. I just loved snowboarding. I watched it on TV, watched videos, and that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to be like that. And and then um, I kind of just chased it and chased it and chased it and ended up on this path of competing, which, um, you know, back when I, I would say when I was younger, I probably enjoyed it way more than I do now. Um, but it's, um, yeah, it was, it's, it's been a crazy journey, really. It's like 22 what 22 years maybe or wow, something it's mad of yeah snowboarding. crazy and yeah and um snowboarding's changed and a lot since then like in terms of kit tricks and stuff like that um mm. i mean it's always changing every winter like new bigger tricks get done um which is hard to keep up with these 16 year olds nowadays <laughs> but um yeah man it's, it's it's a good laugh and i i absolutely love doing it and the reason why i got into biking in the first place was because i needed that adrenaline hit when i was kind of not it was in the off season like summertime i wasn't snowboarding as much like i was only snowboarding once a week because we only the, the local place for me down here is hemel hempstead the snow center and it's only got a freestyle night once well there's jumps and rails once a week so i needed something to fill the gap where i wanted to like you know get the adrenaline going and mountain biking was the the thing i chose and absolutely hooked i love that now just as much as i love snowboarding you know well, that's rad that's that well cool, cool. Mm. did you enjoy this clip if so please like and subscribe the full episode is available by hitting one of the links on the screen right now or type The Ride Companion into your favourite podcast app. We've even put links in the show description for you. Cheers!